What's up? This is JavaScript timing routines and also for in versus for of versus good old for loops. So what I have here is a pretty much a JavaScript file, but I put it inside of an HTML file just so that it could be run within a web browser. But besides the script tag at the top and the bottom, otherwise it's pretty much the same as a .js file. That's just a, the simplest way. All the way back to Netscape 2.0, you can do that and get away with running a plain old script file. And in here I have two functions. I have this first function that is um, create hash table. This is based on something somebody in Ben Hacker's chat had brought up about some stuff to do with like some weird timings on uh, for loops and generating hash tables and everything. So I basically took their source code and kind of modified it to my liking a little more. And this is what I came up with. So it's just basically like renaming some variables and stuff from what they had. So this function will create, it's called create hash table. Obviously it takes in one number and then it creates a new array called hash table and then it populates that array based on the number given and it just fills each value with the boolean of true and then it returns that table but this is down here we call iterate 25 and that's this second function right here function iterate 25 is that whole deal and it takes in a number pretty much the same number and it creates a few variables here. This variable start time is just uh, basically takes the milliseconds at this at the current point in time. Then it calls that hash table create hash table function, and then after it's done with that, it marks the finish time. So it's basically timing the routine to create that hash table, which is just an array filled with true values, and then it goes ahead and logs that time that it took to with that keyword there make it easy to find and then it starts another timer and uses reuses those same variables and here's the various for loops I've commented out the for in and the for of and here we have the old school standard for loop which is the quickest option probably a little bit less clean and readable than the other options but it executes the fastest and then down here of course it marks when it's done and all it does is it just accesses that hash table. It accesses each and every value in that hash table, um, each enumerable value. And then it it clocks the time on that and logs it to the console with the keyword access. And then what it does here is that first n that was passed in right here, it checks and it sees if that n is greater than zero then take one from it and call this function again. So this is a tail call. It's obviously a recursive function for no particular reason. The way they had implemented it originally, it was just an outer for loop, but I thought, you know what? An outer for loop doesn't seem so clean and readable, even though it, in its own respect, it is clean and readable. So I just thought, oh, well, I'll go ahead and change it up to do it like this. So this is, since uh, to my knowledge, like no browser really does tail calls efficiently like they should. If you go in and look at the can I use specs, you'll notice that the one and only ES6 spec that like none of the browsers to my knowledge yet have implemented is tail call optimizations, which they are supposed to do according to the standard, but they haven't done it. So that means that this is pretty inefficient overall but I went ahead and did it anyway because that's not my problem and it works so knowing all that I'm using programmers notepad too I don't know if you care but that's my editor I like very light IDEs that lean more towards just plain syntax editors than they do to do it all IDEs there's no like linting or anything it just does basically keyword highlighting and I had to come in here and set all these commands if you do download this you just go into options and tools and then you add a thing and you can go in here and you know make sure to uncheck capture output and 
you know make your values look something like so in here and uh, maybe give it a shortcut key and that's how you can get the effect click OK that I have if you want to be like me but I wouldn't blame you if you don't um, so that being said what's going to happen here is it's going to just once again in a little bit quicker overview fashion it's going to generate an array that we're going to call a hash table and populate it with a value true and then it's going to go through and access each element it's not going to print each element it's just going to literally access each one so just shy of printing because I'm doing a timing test here and ideally IO calls like especially console.log that's they're very costly so if you really want to get that that good number that's you want it detached from IO you want it detached from Dixat excuse me from disk access and stuff like that so that's kind of what I'm doing here and I'm using performance now instead of date now because um date now can work in a lot of cases but performance now generally has a little bit higher granularity and it also is supposedly immune to like system clock skew so like if we started running this and all of a sudden my clock decided to uh, do its update you know it's getting later in the evening here and if it decided to go ahead and do its update and then it decides like oh wow I'm a minute off and it adjusts itself then the date dot now function is going to that skewed result is going to pick up in my results so I mean if you do use date dot now or I recommend in any timing of a performance thing try and get over a second value try to avoid like purely sub second values and uh, run it multiple times to ensure that whatever you know that you didn't end up with a skew in there or something so if you run it like three or more times then you're probably going to realize like oh okay if there's a skew I've already done that so I can pretty much guess what the results should be really close to in here so I'm not going to be running it a whole lot for the sake of that uh, you know sitting around on a video but anyway that said I'm going to go to tools I'm going to open this in chromium which is the open source version of Google Chrome OBS studio is mad because I'm using all the resources so the video may be glitching and jumping around right now but as soon as this JavaScript's done, it should catch up. And this is the fastest one of the iterations. It'll probably take close to 30 seconds to run all the way through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control Shift I. I'm not doing anything else right now because usually when it says page unresponsive, it, there it goes. So it's done. That little scroller, quick doing it. And if you run it in yours, you'll notice it'll probably finish before page unresponsive or right after page unresponsive now what I'm going to do after everything's done running is press control shift I bring up the inspector console I guess I have to highlight the browser window control shift I and then you can see here's all those outputs bunch of zero milliseconds for the single digit two to the nth but if we get up into the double digit two to the nth we can see there's actually some timings here this is a few seconds slower than it usually takes if I'm not recording video but anyway it's usually around 13 milliseconds for this one and so on down the way um, the rest of these are actually a lot closer to how they are regardless but yeah so to create the table um, since these are millisecond values you can chop off the three the three last digits and then you have basically 16.9 seconds or whatever you want to round it to there and then this was to access that entire table took less than a tenth of a second which is pretty fast and then you can see right here if we follow these every other one of these is that create and it's just two to the nth minus one all the way down so you can see it's sort of like a halving we're going from 16 to 7 6 to 3 3 to 1 5 to 7 7 so it's roughly a halving so that tells you that it's a uh, a linear a linear situation an o of uh, o of n because whenever you're going to the power of twos you know you take off that one like uh, 2 to the 25th is exactly double the values of 2 to the 24th you know you're adding that extra binary digit so you can see there's a halving there and then the uh, same thing with the axis is it's 77 roughly half at 47 and then this weird effect I've noticed seems to consistently pop up right around here is 
that all of a sudden it takes like several hundred milliseconds again and then it goes back to the having so I don't know exactly that's probably must be some implementation detail in chromium but that's that and so we'll go back over here and look at how that timing was done again it uses performance now the best thing to do is just to straight set that to a plain variable right before you call the function that you want to time um, maybe even more ideally you could do it inside of the function itself like right in here but that's all up to you um, you know especially if you're going for like up here this stuff that's over you know several seconds long that's pretty accurate but when you get down here you'll see that like some of this stuff is like one millisecond zero milliseconds all that that timer is I would say on most modern browsers it's roughly a millisecond accuracy if you're dealing with Firefox they have some overzealous protections in there and it may round up I think it's between like Firefox 60 and 70 roughly something like that it may round up to like a hundred milliseconds so instead of seeing like zero and one millisecond you might be seeing like a hundred or a few hundred milliseconds here if that's the case you can go into your about config and um, there's a value you can look up that you can shut off there to to disable that if you really want to get this like close to a millisecond value as far as I know in the very newest Firefoxes it should be about and some of the older ones it should be around a millisecond and for most other browsers that support that feature it should be about a millisecond accuracy anywhere from a half millisecond to two millisecond accuracy that's why I say a millisecond um, and of course run it a few times and see what you get so that being said about the timing function stuff that's pretty much the overall way to do it now I mean, I want to say since Firefox 15, roughly, um, one of the earlier versions of Google, Google Chrome, like performance now is pretty much standard. If for some reason you're using a way, way old browser, you can do the date now. Just, of course, try not to touch anything. Run it multiple times just in case your date updates or anything. Um, once you're running in the browser, I'll go ahead and run this next one while I'm talking. For some reason, my shortcut to do the comments on here like shorted out I was doing some stuff earlier that was like really pushing the limits and I must have like fried something so anyway um, that was a standard for in loop right there and what I did was I just went ahead and calculated the uh, the full 2 to the power of n at the beginning so there's just that one calculation and then I counted down that's just one method it doesn't seem to be the hugest deal to do it either way but that's what I did and then right here is uh, this is a for of loop and what the of loop does in JavaScript which is relatively new I mean any modern browsers are totally gonna cover for of but if you go way back, I'm crazy sometimes. I, you can see up here I have like a Netscape 2.0 link and a Firefox 1.0. So I go way back with some of the stuff I do to like at least ES3. But short of that, uh, most any browser you come across is going to support this for of loop. And that's going to go through each value, each enumerable value. And uh, it's a little bit different than for in because the for in loop is going to go through each enumerable property so it's not necessarily as you can see here like I have it commented out of course but in this uh, for for in loop what's going on here is you actually you take the hash table and then you have to pump that key into it to because it's only going to give you the property it's not going to give you that value but right here with the for of loop you can see I just tell it you know create a variable value and then poof it's there it's a lot like like a little bit of a, a syntax sugared version of this one but it should take significantly longer so I'm gonna hit F5 to save and run it in Chromium with my particular setup and I'm not clicking anything because I don't want to skew the results at all and even just changing tabs or pretty much anything could potentially skew the results this will probably take a little bit longer. I can hear my CPU fan kicking on. It'll probably take a little bit longer than maybe double the amount of time. It should take less than a minute. 
we get our good old weight, you can click that. It shouldn't be any big deal on the impact of the performance. And then once that screen pops up like that, spinner stops, control shift I. And then what do we have? 16.2, so that's pretty close for the create table. We can see right there. I mean, that's virtually identical in my opinion. Right here on the access, we got a little over two seconds, you know, almost a second. That's significant because right here we're down to like less than a tenth a second. Right here we're at a couple seconds. So the table, the actual access is, which is that four of loop. If we go back over here, um, this was access the create tables exactly the same code as it was for the first run. So this is taking significantly longer, a little bit cleaner looking. Um, I'm not sure how far up the prototype chain this goes. I want to say this will try to go up the prototype chain and that really only makes sense of why it might take so much longer with this uh, next one we're going to run here it definitely goes up the prototype chain and that's the thing is this guy right here is going to you know not only deal with our hash table but it's going to go into this the array itself the prototype and go hey is there any enuma any property in here that you know we should care about and so on up any chains that might be there so this one takes insanely long it's way longer so this one you really want to avoid obviously if you're you know if you're going for optimal speed your first implementation you might use this of it's more readable that's generally programmers read programs programmers write programs for other programmers so that's what you probably want to go with at first you know permitting you're not trying to run it on ancient browsers or something like I would and then right here this would be your optimization like yeah it's a little bit less readable you could even probably get away with hiding it in a function um, be sure and test it make sure it's not insanely longer for function calls or something but and in this day and age it really shouldn't be but um, then there's this one and this is mainly this for in it seems like if you're coming from other languages like wouldn't that be the one to use you know like especially if you're more schooled in the last decade or so and uh, that type of thing you're probably thinking like for in that that just seems natural um, it's actually not it's the complete opposite in JavaScript the for of is the more natural thing you probably want to go for this is just going to crawl through way more values than you probably had in mind or way more properties I should say and it's going to take a really long time um, I was able to blow out there's this thing called grail VM that's sort of like the next generation of like JavaScript plus so many other language like Java engine and uh, by using the for in loop I actually blew it out blew a gasket in it and I had to do a bug report and everything so just to give you an idea of how resource intensive this can be. Uh, and then it's sort of like the worst of both worlds here because you not only have to bring up your variable hash table, but you also have to index it just like you do there. And you're going to index it with like not even numeric key, which was fairly efficient with like an array like value. You're using like basically like a text key so there's a little bit of translation that goes on there there's just all sorts of stuff if you really dig under the hood for potential slowdowns but the main the main reasons for using the in is for like debugging if you need to go through and see like hey what properties are available on what objects at what time or something like that or if you want to do like that's why i've named it a key here because if you want to like iterate through and get like every key on an object or something where you're not necessarily going through like mad efficiency on tons of numbers like we are here you just want to go through and say hey what keys are available effectively on this object stuff like that that's where this will come in handy so anyway all that being said i'm going to hit Control s to save it and then f5 to run it um this is going to take an insanely long amount of time I'm just gonna alt tab back over here and see if there's anything else worth talking about while that's running one little thing I do is 
I put these plus signs right against the quotes in like Java and JavaScript because if you, you're probably familiar that um, when that plus is against a string value, then it's going to lean towards being a string value. It's going to lean towards like a string concatenation instead of like an addition operation. So by doing that, I not only save that space, but I effectively create like that type of an operator in my mind. And that just like right here, the reason I have this, uh, this, oh, well, let me highlight just one of those. So the reason I have this little brace is because uh, we have to do that to force this arithmetic, of course, right here to do finish time minus start time. And then this two fixed value will get rid of the decimal point, which at least a modern version of Chromium will give you like a ton of decimals after the decimal point on some of the older browsers or other options for running JavaScript. It won't. But anyway, that's why I threw the two fixed in there. So that's a little trick I do to save like and right here I've done it again is it saves a space and it kind of like emphasizes the fact that this is a concatenation against a string. Um, right here, I've already explained that. I can get away with doing this if on one line because I, like if I were to do this if and go down here like this and tab it over like that, the problem here is that there's a possibility that JavaScript is going to try and do an automatic semicolon insertion like that. So that's why we have that habit in JavaScript of always adding those curly braces there. But right here, since I have it on one single line, a little bit frowned upon with a lot of styles and stuff, but that creates it, for, uh, prevents it from doing that semicolon insertion. And then I've, I'm always explicit with my semicolons. If I'm missing one, it's an accident. Like I always, I think that was kind of like a flaw with the language personally. That's just, my personal belief let's see if this is done no it's not done yet so just to give you an idea how long that's taking right here of course i'm doing a countdown um just a minor optimization instead of a count up and this is kind of like the same thing as saying less than or, or greater than or equal to zero you just say greater than negative one um, that's a readability versus optimization trade-off and personally I think that it really should be like this but I think the uh, person who wrote it had done a similar thing like this so I thought you know what I kind of like that little clever optimization there like no big deal so I went ahead and left it and this is also I almost it's not literally dependency injection but sort of has like that vibe to it because down here we're calling hash table create hash table it's a very readable simple one line there and then by pass i was debating like maybe just throw this this little block of code right in here and then we could get rid of the return um that type of a thing but i went ahead and left it as its own little external function because i find that's a little more readable than when you're here the idea is is that for readable code, you want your variables, of course, your identifiers to be readable. And then if you dig into them, you want everything to be like literally just one little notch lower of abstraction between each thing. So it's like, what does iterate do? And you can come through here and see this, you know. But um, once you get like right here, this whole for loop kind of stuff, that's debatable if it's readable in there. Like, we could just stuff this, like for example, we could stuff any one of these for loops, whichever one we choose, stuff it in a, uh, a function called access every value in hash or every value in table or something. Just anything you'd be tempted if you're like, oh, I just every time I come across that, I want to just like put a comment right here that says like access each or access every value in table then instead of doing that, I could just rename it to a function called like ACCESS every oops table value 
something like that and then I could call that function you know if I push that all out to there and then ideally you end up with like a declarative type of a a thing so that if somebody comes in here and they're like what's iterate do and then it would literally just read like sentences or phrases all the way down you know and then each thing it's like okay what does oh my mouse is going out piece of junk it's like beginning of September end of August right now and it's the everything's going out like the connections are overheating on everything I have I can use my pad okay I'm just going to unplug that mouse. It's obviously shortened out or something. But yeah, that's that on declarative programming. And let's see if it's done now. Still running. So that just shows you how long this JS4 in loop deal is. It's insane because it's going each one of those iterations on end of the 20 or 2 to the 25th, 2 to the 24th. It's going all the way up and down each prototype chain. And even if those are short chains, which I imagine they are in this context, it's, it just, that time compounds on there. So it's just not worth it. Like, do not, I think the ultimate takeaway here is like, do not use for in loops in Java script unless it, you know, unless you're debugging or you're doing something where you want to like print out each available key and stuff. And there's other things you can do to tune it too. Like you can just stick to like has own property or what is it, get own property. Um, the get own prop, get own properties or whatever. That requires a slightly newer browser. Um, the is own property or has own property, I can't remember what it is anymore. That one goes way back. So if you care anything about that. I'm just going to switch over here. Maybe this will run faster. It should finish any minute now. I can't believe it. it must be because I'm recording a video that it's taken extra long. Because I want to say it's usually finished by now. But I could almost just cancel it and just I think everybody gets the idea by now so what I did right here is I passed in value of 25 and then it um, comes in here the first time ends gonna be 25 2 to the 25th and it's gonna scroll through that and then it's gonna knock it down to 2 to the 24th and so on and it, even when it's 1 it's going to knock it down to zero right here. So even though it looks like it's going to be above zero, it's going to knock it all the way down to zero for that last call, which is pretty much pointless, but whatever. Man, I can't believe that. Do a quick review of these ones. So we had 16 and 7, 6. Okay, so let's look here. We're down to like zero milliseconds around 12. 12 and below, it's down to zero for sure. Let's go over here, get down to like, yeah, 12 and below, it's zero milliseconds there. It'll probably still be zero milliseconds or close to, oh, it's at least white now. I'm gonna try and press Control Shift I one time. That might have skewed the results a little bit. Come on, thing. When I was running this, there it goes. It's got to be close now. We've got the wait window. Okay, I'm going to show Grail VM real quick. How can I do this without taking up a bunch of resources? I don't know if any of these browsers would work. Let's go to Firefox, ESR. This definitely probably skew the results. So that Grail VM thing I was talking about. 
you go to grailvm, g-r-a-a-l-v-m.org. And this is like next gen Java, next gen, eventually going to be next gen Python. It's already next gen Ruby. It beats out the old Ruby interpreter. It's a po polyglot uh, virtual machine, to say the least. I mean, I just can't even begin to explain what all this does. It's not, they claim it's production worthy. Don't believe that junk. It's not production worthy. It's almost there, but I think it still has a few more years, you know, at least another year or two to go before it gets there at the rate they're going. Um, you can just literally click this download link right here. I'm going to hit escape a couple times trying to stop that page load. Slightly older version of Firefox, kind of slow. Here they've got a high performance ahead of time AOT, so it's like static. You can take like dynamic languages and compile them statically, which is pretty trip, right? And I just can't even begin to explain. Like, you can do uh, one of the really cool things I like is you can do almost static compilations where you can compile like for Linux everything except the glibc you can take like a java program and compile it as a native binary and then tell it not to not to hard code the glibc version in it so that it will still dynamically like accept the system glibc which if you've done any linux compilation you know that that's like the big hang up that's the biggest speed bump is like oh man if i could just like do everything static except glibc right well you can do that with this thing at least in theory i've never tried that out and the amount of bugs that I've ran into I mean there's not a huge amount of bugs but you can find them you can hit walls with this for sure um, it creates it's just this is insane this is like total next-gen stuff right here if you're into programming like you need to know about this grail VM thing because it's freaky and it allows you to basically use like say you like the uh, the scientific libraries in Python like who doesn't write though all that stuff is available like it's still kind of beta ish but you can access it in javascript or you can access it in java it's kind of clunky but i mean it's there and this is what they call it the truffle truffle ruby so truffles like that next gen engine thing um if you want to write your own language that's what that truffle is good for you can literally just build out your abstract syntax tree and you're done you're like you're pretty much there you don't have to go through like all the hard work from there is done for you so that alone I mean if you take each one of these major features that it can do alone they're all insane crop cross-platform native images you know you can compile WASM stuff like uh, what else is there the LLVM stuff like C C++ rust you can just you can turn that stuff into polyglot access. You can native compile it for several platforms. It is just off the hook insane. So anyway, I want to point that out because that, like I was using that as my JavaScript at the command line thing instead of using these browsers. And that was working all good until I did that for in loop. And then it crashed out because I was using that tail call, I think back here because I was doing this I have to imagine it was something to do with that because it ran out of memory the funny thing was it was actually calling Java to do the memory allocation apparently which kind of makes sense because the grail VM thing is like heavily Java and that's the other thing too is it comes with the absolute second to latest like Java interpreter or whatever you want to think of it as like the hotspot compiler or whatever the second to latest Java engine. So like right now, the latest one in my knowledge is like uh, Java for the long-term support releases is Java 8.265. And it came with like Java 8.261. Um, actually, Java 11.0.8 is like the newest long-term support release. But I just happened to catch the Java 8 numbers, which it also supports Java 8 as well. It's like dual support so it's just it's off the hook cool in all those regards just totally definitely check that out it's worth the time this thing's still running forget it i'm done it should be done if i wasn't recording a video or i was running in like that grail vm thing and it didn't crash or something it would probably be done but anyway thanks for checking that out